Kia ora. Now that we've spent a bit of time understanding what vectors can be used to describe, it's time to roll up our sleeves and start to learn how to do some mathematics with them. In this lesson, we're going to focus on a couple of basic operations. These are vector addition and scalar multiplication. We'll discover quite soon that these are in fact pretty easy to actually do, so we'll spend a bit of extra time focusing on what they mean, which is maybe more important. All right, so here we go. First off, we're going to look at vector addition. So let's begin by taking ourselves a vector in R3. We'll go for 1, negative 3, 3. To add another vector to it, which has to have the same number of elements, for example, negative 2, 3, and 4, we just add the corresponding entries together, just like with adding regular numbers. So we'd write it out like follows. 1, negative 3, 3, plus negative 2, 3, 4. It's going to be equal to 1 plus negative 2, negative 3 plus 3, 3 plus 4, which overall will equal negative 1, 0, 7. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now we do like to define formulae in general, so we could write this slightly more formally as the following definition. We'll say let A and B be vectors in Rn, that's vectors with n elements. Then A plus B, which is A1, A2 through to An, plus B1, B2 through to Bn, is simply equal to A1 plus B1, a2 plus b2 through to an plus bn. Notice that the definition starts by defining the things in question, for us the vectors a and b, then it gives the actual definition of how to do it. Now before we move on, let's just do a quick example just to check that you've got the hang of it. So what I'd like you to do is to do the following two problems. The first one is 0 0.5, negative 1, negative 3, plus 1, negative 2, 3. And the second one is 3, negative 1, 2, plus 1, negative 2. So pause the video, do these real quick before you move on. Hopefully you got 1.5, negative 3, 0 for the first one, and that you found the second wasn't possible because the vectors aren't the same size. One has three elements and one has two. Now it's helpful to write down a few properties of vector addition that are true in general. The first of these is called commutativity, and that just tells us that a plus b is always equal to b plus a. Second one is associativity. This one says that if I take a and b and add them together first, and then add c, so that's a plus b with parentheses around it, plus c, I get the same thing as if I added b and c together first, and then added on a, so a plus b plus c in parentheses. This property is called associativity. And finally, zero, we can define a vector zero, which is just the vector of all zeros, and it has the property that a plus zero is equal to zero plus a, which just obviously equals the vector a. It might seem a little bit weird to explicitly state all of these facts, because they come from properties of numbers that we're very familiar with. For example, we know that one plus two is equal to two plus one, never give it, never give it a second thought, and it doesn't matter what order we add numbers up in. But a little bit later on, we'll start discovering operations where some of these properties don't actually hold true, and we'll have to be more careful. So think of this as habit building. It's good to get into the habit of setting the ground rules for any new operations early on. Right, next on the list is scalar multiplication. So it's a form of product. There's not one that involves two vectors. We'll get to that in due course. But it's what we get when we multiply a vector by a number. Now that number is often called a scalar because it scales the vector. In this case, we just multiply every entry of the vector by that same number. So we usually write the scalar out the front, so a typical example would look like this. 3 times the vector 1, negative 3, 0 is equal to 3 times 1, 3 times negative 3, 3 times 0, which overall is going to give us the vector 3, negative 9, and 0. Just like with addition, we can write ourselves out a formal definition for this too. And our definition says, again, we'll set up the things we need and, and then we'll actually give the definition. So we'll say let u be a vector in Rn and let a be a scalar, so a member of the real numbers. Then a times u is just a times the vector u1, u2 through to un is then equal to a u1, a u2 all the way through to a un. Again, Let's just do a quick example to check that you guys are happy with it. Pause the video once you, these are on the screen anyway, and calculate the following two. Do negative 1 times 3, negative 7, negative 1, and do 2 times 2, 0. Now hopefully you got negative 3, 7, 1, and 4, 0. 
Just be careful when you're multiplying and adding vectors that we careful to make sure that our negative signs cancel correctly. If we've got a negative times a negative, we've got a positive, that kind of thing. So again, we can write down a list of useful properties that scalar multiplication has to obey. So we'll say let a and b be scalars and let u and v be vectors. Then the following are true. a plus b, that's the scalars, times a vector u is equal to au plus bu. Or a times the vector u plus v is equal to au plus av. We can expand parentheses both ways. Finally, if I take a times b times u, uh, that's equal to a times b times u, which is equal to b times au. These properties essentially just say that we can do things like expanding parentheses with scalar multiplication in the same way that we're used to doing with regular numbers. So with these rules, you should be able to simplify the following into a single scalar times u, plus a single scalar times v. So here we go, here's, here's, an, here's our example. We've got a plus 3b times u plus v minus 3 times u plus 4v. So expand everything out, collect the u's and v's together, and hopefully what you'll find is that you get a plus 3b minus 3 times u plus a plus 3b minus 12 times v. So it's just pretty familiar as just the same as regular algebra that you may be more familiar with, but we're just sort of establishing that we can use the same kinds of rules when we're manipulating scalars and vectors like this. Now you might wonder why it was that we skipped subtraction. Well, it actually turns out that we didn't. Subtraction can actually just be written in terms of addition and scalar multiplication, because a minus b is the same as a plus negative b, which is the same as a plus negative 1 times b. So it's just adding two vectors together where we've multiplied 1 by negative 1 first. When you actually do one, it works element by element just like you'd expect. So for example, 1, 2 minus 3, negative 1 is going to be the vector 1 minus 3, 2 minus negative 1. So that gives us minus 2 and 3. So it's not really a fundamentally different kind of thing. Okay, so now we've got the basic operations under our belts. It's time to do to figure out what these things actually mean. Usually to help us understand what vector operations mean, we look at the vectors in a geometrical context. So let's just figure out what that might mean. A vector can be thought of as an arrow. So in R2, for example, the vector 3, negative 2, just means an arrow that goes right 3 and down 2. The first component is horizontal, so a positive number is right, a negative number means left, and the second component is vertical, so a positive is up and negative is down. So let's look at addition first. If we take our arrow, or consider it to be instructions to go right and then down 2, then adding a second one, such as negative 2, negative 1, just means to then go left 2 and down 1. So we can draw these pictorially as two arrows uh, added head to tail. So reading off the picture, we can see that our overall vector can be written as go right 1 and down 3, or the vector 1 minus 3. So I just mentioned head to tail. The head of a vector is the pointy end, and you can see that we've basically taken our two vectors and stuck the, head, the tail of the second one on the head of the first one. So you can see that, and you can see that what we get here when we do this head to tail addition is exactly what we would have got if we added the two vectors the way we were doing so before. So 3, negative 2, plus negative 2, minus negative 1, is 3 minus 2, which is 1, um, and then negative 2 plus negative 1, which is negative 3. If we add them in the opposite order, you can see that we quite clearly get the same result. And in fact, that's how you would prove the more general uh, property. And the two pictures combined, so if you draw your head to tail addition the other direction, starting with vector negative 2, negative 1, and then adding on 3, negative 2, you can see that the combined pictures form a parallelogram. And we can add multiple, finally, we can add multiple vectors together in this graphical way. And the sum will be the overall vector as if you drew a big long chain of those vectors added head to tail. Okay, so I have a GeoGebra applet here. So GeoGebra is just a useful cloud maths um, environment, where it's, which is especially good for geometrical problems. So I've got myself two vectors A and B here. And let's just see what that head to tail addition looks like and that parallelogram I was just talking about.
So you can see that on the top of this picture, following the vector a and then b, I get my vector a plus b as we just described. And if I start instead going along the vector b and then along the vector a, then I've got b plus a. Both ways head to tail give me the same thing, and so no matter where I position my vectors, I get that same parallelogram. Alright, let's now turn our attention to scalar multiplication. So scalar multiplication is, well you can think of scalar multiplication as a stretch of a vector. For example, multiplying a vector by 2 will stretch it out to double its length while it keeps pointing in the same direction. Likewise, multiplying by a half will halve its length. Negative numbers, well they do pretty much the same thing, except that they end up with the vector pointing in the opposite direction. So for example, negative x is the vector x, but pointing backwards. Again, you can see all these features if we look at it on another little GeoGebra applet. You can see I've got my blue vector u here, and my red scaled vector, which is k times u, where I control the value of k using this little slider up here. So if I bring it up to 2, like I said before, 2 times u is the same vector u, but just two of them, twice as long. So you could, I could do this with addition as well, adding u to itself, head to tail, I'd get that double length, 2 times u. And if I bring k down to a half, you can see I've got this a vector pointing in the same direction, but only half as long. And then let's go to look at negative numbers, and you can see that they're still lined up with u, but they're pointing the opposite direction. So k equals negative 1. So that there is the vector negative u, it's the same length as u, but it's pointing the opposite way. And then as I bring that, edit that scalar, it sort of slides along this continuous line that we see here. Alright, so that's scalar multiplication. Now let's look back at subtraction. Although while I said it was true that subtraction really... Um, is just a combination of addition and scalar multiplication. It has a pretty important geometrical uh, description and way, in, way of understanding it. So let's build up our picture of vector sub subtraction step by step on our diagram in GeoGebra here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out a minus b. So we know that that should be equal to a plus negative b. And we know how to do both addition and scalar multiplication now. So we start by drawing our vector a and negative b. So negative b, there it is, pointing the opposite direction as b, uh, but the same size as it and all that kind of thing. Now we want to add that to a, so we want to shift our vector b, a negative b, so that it starts at the pointy end of a. So, and then, so I've moved my negative b up here. Remember, it's the same vector, it doesn't matter where it starts, it's all the same vector. So move it to up here, and then using head to tail addition, I've got a plus negative b gives me this vector a minus b. Now I can wiggle those around just because it's fun. All right, however, that's not the only thing we can see in this diagram. If you just take a look at this for a second, you may be able to spot somewhere else that I could move this vector a minus b to that might be a more natural place to put it. So where's, where's a gap on this diagram that looks about a minus b sized? Well, maybe you can see that if I start this vector at the end of B and then follow it along, it should end up at A, or at least it looks like it should. So let's just make another copy of A minus B, and it's going to shift it over to where, where I was before. So it isn't, in fact, true that this vector connecting the ends of B and A together is the vector A minus B. So actually, that's a more helpful place to put it. So I'll turn the other ones off. So B, A minus B is just a vector that joins the vectors A and B together. It starts at B, and then it points to the two A. Okay? The way I remember it is the positive thing in the expression A minus B is the thing that it points towards. All right, so vector subtraction actually gives us something about a vector connecting two vectors up. If we put our A plus B back on finally, you can see that it forms the other diagonal of that parallelogram. So this parallelogram has got lots of interesting things on it. It's got A and B on each side, and it's got A plus B and A minus B on the diagonals. Okay, so final note on geometry is that we can use vectors to represent actual points in space or on the plane as well. So geometrically, we've been talking about vectors as being arrows. So to make them into points, so a point is like a dot versus an arrow. If we just start our vector off at the origin, at, the, at 0, 0, and make it point, end up at the point in question, then that vector can be thought of as a point as well. 
Okay, it's often going to be useful for us to adopt vectors to describe points or sets of points in space. And when we do this, we'll always have to be careful that our vectors that describe points start from the origin. Right, so we've actually covered quite a lot of ground in this lesson. Uh, we've learned what addition and scalar multiplication are. We've learned how to do them on vectors and done some work on what they actually mean in geometrical context. So, Carpi, we'll catch you next time.